Welcome to Smash Head Here, where we explore the topics we need today in order to create the future of tomorrow. Today's topic is compound interest. <laughs> compound interest is a subject the average person doesn't seem to think very much about, but wealthy people, they think a lot about it. And in this video, I'd like to show you why that is and why you should be trying to imitate them. So in this video, we are going to define what compound interest is, how it works, and what type of options you can take advantage of in order to apply the magic of compounding interest to your own life. Compound interest refers to interest which is charged on the principal as well as the previously accrued interest. It's often thought of as interest on interest and it has the ability to transform a modest sum into a sizable chunk of capital in relatively little time. Now the rate at which this interest compounds depends on what's called the frequency of compounding as that's real original. But what it means is that interest can be compounded at various rates of time. For example, it could be yearly or semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, weekly, even daily, depending on the investment. What that actually means is that if you're debating between two highly contrived investment examples, uh, one which compounds annually at 10% and another that compounds semi-annually at 5%, the semi-annual rate will result in a greater sum over the same amount of time. For example, if you have $100 and you compound it at 10% annually, at the end of 12 months, it will be worth $110. For the semi-annual rate, however, at 5%, that will be worth $110.25. Now I know, it doesn't seem like a big difference, but the gap between those two will continue to grow wider and wider as time goes on. Compounding interest is calculated using this scary looking formula that looks like it, like it might bite you, but, but it won't. In fact, it'll do you a lot of good. So let's look at an example on the whiteboard just to see how this calculation sort of works using yet another highly contrived investment example. Let's get to it. All right, so to use this equation, we need three pieces of information. The P in the equation stands for the principal, which in this case will be $5,000. The I stands for the interest rate, which in this case will be 5% compounding annually. And the N, the little exponential there, is the compounding frequency. So let's say it compounds 5% over three years. Good. Now, let's plug this into the equation. So we have 5,000 at 5% 5 interest compounded over three years, which will give us 5,000 times 1.05 cubed minus one which equals 5,000, 1 1.1576 minus one will equal 5,000 times 0 0.1576 for a total of $788, $788 in three years. So 5,000 plus 788 gives you a grand total of $5,788 in three years. All you had to do was place $5,000 in this investment and wait. You just wait three years and you've accrued $788 in interest. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's $788 for doing nothing. That is why people say you should put your money to work for you. This is what they mean. This is your money working for you. You didn't have to do anything aside from taking the risk, putting the money in the investment vehicle and waiting, waiting. That's probably the reason people have the most difficulty with this. They, they have no patience. You need to be able to wait. Hopefully you're starting to realize why it is that wealthy people pay attention to interest in this way and why, why you should too, because it's, it's powerful. Now, in addition to the equations we just saw, there are a few other considerations that many investors use in order to determine the value of an investment. The first of these is called the time value of money, and it can be used to determine 
what an investment will be worth in the future and it can also be used in reverse in order to determine at what interest rate a certain investment has been growing at over a set amount of time. So if we take our previously contrived example of $5,000 compounded at 5% interest over three years, uh, using the time value of money equation, we get something like... And as I mentioned, if we use it in reverse, we can calculate how much interest this investment has been accruing over a three-year period, which would look like... In addition to those useful functions, there's yet another one that some investors use in order to figure out how long it will take their money to double at a given interest rate. This is called the rule of 72, and it only applies to interest which compounds annually. Um, it, it looks a little something like this. So let's have a look at the pros and cons of compound interest because depending on which side of the fence you sit on, compound interest can be a source of incredible wealth or one of absolute misery. The average person's exposure to compound interest typically comes in the form of savings accounts and credit card debts. And anyone out there who's ever had the misfortune of being unable to pay off a credit card bill knows that the consequences can be staggering, far-reaching, and catastrophic. Credit cards, like savings accounts, compound the interest daily, which is applied to the principal at the end of the month if you don't pay off the bill in full. That's why it's important to learn how to use credit cards properly. In my own amateurish uh, opinion, I would say just get a cashback credit card, use it to make the purchases you would anyways, such as groceries and gas, and pay it off at the end of the month. That way, at least you are collecting interest on the purchases you were going to make anyways. Anything else is essentially a financial trap. Now for the good stuff. Forget about credit cards taking money out of your pocket and let's look at investments that put money into your pocket. Accruing compound interest is an important factor in protecting yourself against things that erode away wealth like inflation. So in that sense, any investment is better than none. But uh, any sort of low risk, uh, index fund type of investments where the, the boring, slow and steady approach to your future is, is probably an ideal way to go. However, of course, there are other investments. There's real estate or real estate funds, gold, commodities, stocks, and these days crypto might even be a viable option for you. Now, these are all good ways of compounding interest over time that come with their own particular brand of pros and cons. So as always, make sure you do all of your research before you put your money anywhere. The truth is, the world is changing very quickly. With the explosion of blockchain protocols and cryptocurrency, no one is sure what the future of society or finance will look like. But I think it's safe to say that the concept of compound interest will be part of people's lives regardless of the financial system we adopt. It's important to understand the underlying concepts so that you can quickly identify opportunities and take advantage of them as early as possible. So that's it. That is the exciting world of compounding interest, how it works, and why you should be actively looking for ways to take advantage of it in your own life. If you like this video, make sure to let YouTube know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, then hit the subscribe button while you're at it. And with that, thank you for your time.